I would that you'd take just a few moments and ask the Lord for nothing else but to bless your name. Amen. I ask you to let this service be God breathed. God breathed. God anointed. God appointed. Not that we would walk in the flesh, but tonight that we would truly and surely walk in the Spirit of God, the presence of God, calling on the name of God, Jesus Christ Himself. Don't hold anything back. Don't pass anything to the right or to the left. But tonight, begin to call on the name of Jesus and say, Jesus, breathe on us. Jesus, speak to us. Jesus, guide us tonight. We're not here for anything else. We're not here for any other purpose, for any other reason, for any other place. Now rebuke the spirit of division. I rebuke the spirit of compromise. I even rebuke the spirit of false doctrine in Jesus' name. Breathe on us, God. Oh, like only you can. Let the breath of God be in this place. Let the anointing of God, the joy of be upon this people in this place. Every ear, every heart, every mind, every thought. submit to you. We submit to you. We give our all tonight with holy hands lifted high. We give our all tonight to you, Jesus. For you alone, you are the Almighty God by yourself. Almighty God, you're worthy. Almighty God, you're worthy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For your glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. Keep calling. Don't wait. This doesn't have to subside. 
We don't have to put prayer on the back burner. It needs to be on the front. It needs to be the most important thing in a church. Prayer without prayer, we're not a church. We're a glee club. Without prayer, we're not the body. We're a one of being in the church. Come on. Come on. The Lord told me that some of you don't even want to be here. Some of you are just tired and weary and in war. And God said, I want more. I want more. When the enemy's after you that hard, he wants more of you. When the enemy wants to destroy you, God says, seek my faith harder. He said, when you seek my faith harder, you'll find me. He said, you'll find me. Holy, holy, holy. Which was and is and is to come. Oh, breathe on us tonight. Oh, you know the question. We're giving it all to you, Lord. Have your way, Lord. We've repented of every sin. We've laid aside every, every trial. We've laid it on the altar tonight before anything else. So that we can earnestly and honestly hear from you. Lead us tonight, Lord. Let us know the authority and the responsibility you call us to tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus upon this people, upon this church, upon this property. I plead the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy. Holy is the Lord. Jesus, be it for your glory, Lord. But we've come not to compromise, but to sell out to you. We've come not to compromise, but to magnify, to glorify, to honor and lift up the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You, Jesus Christ, and you alone. We put our faith in you. We earnestly ask your will be done tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep praising and worshiping the sister now it sings for the glory of God. Hallelujah.
mighty move of the Spirit of God in this place. Come on, no way to go. Come on, when you can connect with God and His presence be like this, no way to go. There's nothing else more important than staying in that realm. There's nothing more important than connecting with God right there. Oh, I know, Lord. I know the enemy's bringing down. say this real quick. If anybody's opening up the vents in the basement, stop touching them. Nobody asked you to, and I'm not being rude. We, we open and close them seasonally to take care of the air. Amen? When it's 103 degrees outside and you open up the basement to make it even colder than what it over, it's, it's 52 degrees in our basement. And when you open those things up, it gets colder. And I'm sorry if you're fat like me and you like coolness, but we need to make sure we're taking care of God's house, okay? So please bear with me on that. Amen? 
I plan on ministering to you, and this didn't come to me till just now. The word came to me earlier today, asked my wife, I've had it a long portion of this day. But the thought that just came to me, uh, that the Lord gave me, didn't happen until I stood on this platform. Gentlemen, I want to remind you next Tuesday, if I say Tuesday, Tuesday, next Tuesday is Mountain Movers here at the church, and that is our Bible study. Amen? Yeah. Except we're not having Bible study. You bring your Bibles, I'm going to be pastor, and we're going to reach heaven. And then we'll touch our Bibles. Amen? Amen. You come ready to touch. If, you can't, if you're not ready to touch heaven, stay home. Y'all right with that? We are going to touch heaven. And we're not going to stop until we're done. Amen. 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 We need to reach the throne of God. Amen. Praise be to God. So come. Mountain movers, all you men. Invite another man. I don't care where they attend church. We're not taking them from the church. We're inviting them to pray. That's all we're doing. We encourage them to go back and take them to their church. Amen? But we are wanting to have like-minded vessels praying and touching the throne of God for lost souls together. Amen? I don't know about you, but I want to see souls coming through that door and sitting in these seats. I want to see lives change. I want to see destinations change. I want to see bodies and minds and spirits and, 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 and people filled with the Holy Ghost, repented, baptized in Jesus' name. I want to see generational curses blasted away from the family. Amen. We'll never reach a sustainability of revival in the body of Christ till we reach a sustainability of prayer life. Yeah. I'll say it again. We'll never reach a sustainability of revival in the body of Christ until we reach a sustainability of prayer in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Turn with me, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 21. 18 and verse number 21. As soon as you're able to get it, say amen, so I know when we have an abundance of people that are there. Amen. Amen. Anybody else, you just don't obey? Amen. Proverbs 18, 21. Is everyone there? Yes. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I'm going to say it again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it. Hmm. Stay with me. Those who love it. Shall eat the fruit thereof. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm going to preach and teach both tonight. Maybe a little bit more teaching at times. I don't even know if I'm going to get all the way through this. I've got 30 plus scriptures. And I haven't even hit the tip of the pit. I'm going to teach and preach tonight on the words that matter. Voices of responsibility. The word, words that matter, voices of responsibility. Sister Ross, pray over this message with an anointing. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to reach out upon each and every one of us, dear Lord Jesus, and ask you to open our hearts and open our minds to receive this message that Pastor has for each one of us. I pray, dear Lord, that we use it to glorify you each and every day, God, and I pray that we on every soul we come in contact with God. I ask you to touch Pastor. Let his words be your words, dear Lord Jesus. Oh my God, in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Amen. I'm going to say some bold things tonight. I need you to get your hurt feeling list out of the way. Okay? I need you, I need your little little, little sissified feelings. List to, to, matter of fact, just burn it real quick. 
That way you can get right with God and keep moving forward. Amen? I'm not impressed by your words unless you have a prayer life. I'm not impressed with you and your walk with God unless you're walking with God. Amen. I didn't say you're not talented. God bless you. You're talented. God's given you a, a blessing and you ought to be using those talents for God anyway. You know what? I never understood why people with the gift of blab blab about everything but God. Never understood why those with the gift of gab gabbed about everything about but how good your Jesus is. How wonderful the presence of God is. How powerful the church services have been. What a move and a presence of God has been in that place. I don't understand people who have the gift of God, but they'll gossip and they'll rant and they'll rain and they'll, they'll back talk and they'll backbite and they'll backstab and, and they'll forward stab and every other stab again, but they miss talking about Jesus altogether. And if, and if you're doing all that other stuff and saying, oh, by the way, you should come to my church. Maybe I won't. And the reason I said if you didn't have a prayer life first, then, then your voice has no value to me is because you're, if you have a prayer life, I don't have to worry about thinking you've got that other life where you do all those other things. Right? My, my ability to read the scripture by God's grace and mercy only by the Holy Ghost. I assure you. Because I remember, I actually remember going and reading the Bible when I was younger going, I, I, I'll just go to something else. I don't know what they're talking about. Maybe I'll go to one of the stories they used to tell in Sunday school. <laughs> oh yeah, here it is. David and Goliath. I'll read that one. And I'll get excited about Jesus. Uh, uh, maybe it was, uh, man, oh, oh, wait a minute. No, I, I need to read about how Moses and all of those guys went across that water and, and on, on, on dry ground. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll read on, on that one. Because I don't get this other unties uh, and thou be unto, see, hitherto, uh, uncomplex and, and full. Uh, yeah, I don't get that. But when I got the Holy Ghost, when I got the Holy Ghost, when I got the Holy Ghost, I didn't have to say, I don't understand that. I don't get that. I'm not quite in tune with that. Why? Because when the Holy Ghost is inside of you, it teaches you all things. In other words, it gives you the revelation of God's Word. I don't care how many times you read it through. I don't care if you read it from Genesis 1 and 1 to Revelation. Amen. The Word of God will be revealed to you. And it is that revelation that I depend on to this day. It is the revelation of God that I depend on this hour. In Jesus' name. And I realize, I, I, I don't know if you noticed, we went to general conference this past week, had a great time in the Lord. Powerful move of God. Many, many, many words were spoken to many people prophetically and they were spot on. One of the men of God, I, I didn't know if anybody was going to speak to me or not. As a matter of fact, and as one of the leadership, you don't think about how God is going to do this or God is going to do that or God is going to do you, you, You've got to maintain that maybe you need to just sit back and let God bless the people. Let God minister to the people. Let God endure and, and, and strengthen unto the people. And, and as you do those things, you, you're like, okay, God, I'm not going to get in your way. You do what you got to do. And right in that moment, when I say, God, you do what you got to do. A man of God cleaned over to me and said, Thus saith the Lord. Uh. And he said, Everything I was wondering about, everything I was needing, that man of God be 
begin to speak it into my ear and say, Thus saith the Lord, this is what's going to happen, and this is what's going to grow, and this is what's going to go be blessed. And everybody you ask for, you ask for the ones that nobody else wanted, they're coming. But they're not just coming to be an interruption. That's not what they're coming for. Yeah, they need some training. Yeah, they need some patience as a pastor's heart has. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it in, and they're going to be soul winners. They're going to be people that want to be about my father's business. That's my father's about his business. He said, they're going to come in and it's going to grow and it's going to prosper and I'll bless it. Yeah. You know what I can't do? I can't show favoritism to somebody that's lazy. Neither can God. Oh, I feel I do a lot. Doing a lot is not commitment. Just because you do some things and you feel like it's a lot, is it what God had asked you to do multiple times and you refused to do or failed to do or just said, I don't know what to do? You know why you didn't know what to do? You didn't research it. You didn't seek face uh, anybody's face to ask about it. You didn't ask your leadership. You didn't ask anybody else outside of the church who is involved in those things. How can I do this better? How can I grow? How can I mature? In other words, you shut your own voice box off. You cut your own tongue out because you justified every foolish thing instead of doing something for the kingdom of God. Still with me? Hallelujah. As we were there at this conference and everything was over, everything was done, I went down the pay our bill, still dealing with it because they're liars. They don't, they don't have to worry. They keep taking God's money. I will pray. Not my will. Thy will be done, Lord. But Lord, repay them a hundredfold for what they've done to us. All right. All right. I don't have time to play with people that mess with God. Or God's money. Right. Amen. Amen. So, I will put it in God's hands in great capacity. Yes, sir. I don't want evil to happen to them, but I sure don't want them to sit there and act like everything's okay when they know what they've done was wrong. And as I'm sitting there talking to this clerk, this clerk looks at me and he, he, he says the very same thing that was wrong, the very same thing I told him was untrue, he, instead of listening to me and, and actually verifying what I was saying, he began to tell everybody, even people on the telephone, that I was saying, what, what did the opposite of what I was saying. So finally the man looked at me and he said, it's just words, sir, it doesn't matter. And my Holy Ghost got up inside me in that moment and I said, no, it does matter. This one stepped back and that one shut up. They were already about wrongdoing. But let me tell you something. Words matter. Words matter. I don't care whether you're in the church, outside of the church. I don't care if you're in business or in your household every day. Your words have value. And the value is one of two. They either speak death or they speak life. Are you a killer or are you a life breather? If you're a killer, you're no good and no better than Satan himself. But if you're a life breather, you're a child of God. You're a vessel of the Most High. You have received the blessing and the obedience and the fullness of God. But the problem is this, and I find in the body, we don't know that words matter. I wouldn't have done it that way. Were you the one that was supposed to do it? Because if you were, why didn't you do it? They had to. And if you weren't, shut up and stay out of it. Oh, preacher shouldn't say like that. I'm giving you the power of my words tonight. I'm trying to tell you, if it ain't none yours, don't get involved. If it wasn't your purpose, your place, or your, if you are not to have heard it, why were you there when you could have heard it? Because I'm telling you, the same Holy Ghost that reveals the Word of God to you reveals when you shouldn't be around some people that can't keep their mouth shut. 
It is something. Oh, the Holy Ghost is ten. Teach us all things. Oh, I didn't know that. You lost your Holy Ghost for what? Oh, no. I just stopped listening to it. It was bothering me. So that must mean you were around the wrong people and you're living the wrong life a whole lot for the Holy Ghost to have to talk to you that much. I'd much rather take correction of the Holy Ghost than find myself rock bottom wishing to God I could hear his voice. Still with me? Anybody can talk garbage about anything. People talk out of pain. People talk out of brokenness. People talk out of resentment. People talk out of misery. People talk out, about, out, out of the hardness of their heart. People talk out of the discontent of their position. People talk out of the strife in their soul. What have you been talking out of? I assure you it's been your mouth. But what department of the heart have you been giving your mouth to orders for? From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. So whatever's been coming out of your mouth, it's not, oops, I didn't mean to say that. You liar, you meant to say it, came right out of your heart. Tell me, well, I need to shut this off. No, I encourage you to leave it on. You need to learn about your heart condition, and you need to learn about your mouth condition. I should con condition my mouth to preach the gospel of Christ, to teach the gospel of Christ, to show the love of Christ, to love people to life instead of loving them to death. I should love them to encouragement instead of destitution. I should bless them instead of curse them. I should be life instead of death. Every time you speak against somebody, you're speaking death. Well, I don't see it that way. That's the problem. You're not seeing like Jesus. You're still seeing like your flesh. Fast and pray. Get your flesh under control already. Hallelujah. Words matter. And when people hear you, they must hear a voice of responsibility. You are responsible for blessing God's kingdom and building it. Unless you choose not to. And whether you want to admit it or not, then you are responsible for speaking against it and trying to destroy it. See, people get quiet in a moment. Because I guarantee you, God did not give me this because we were doing it right. Luke, I'm going to be bumping around. Let's go first to Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 3. You still with me? I'm going to give you sips of water because I need to. Because it's hot up here. Proverbs 13 and 13 says, Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. You know what that's saying? To destroy something, to destroy the word. You know what it's literally saying? When I choose and I decide to ignore the word of God, I am choosing to destroy it. Proverbs 13, 13. You still with me? When I choose to ignore something, I'm choosing death to it. You know how I tell you I'm angry with you? I ignore you. Most people, not me. I get in your face. If you choose to purposefully ignore somebody, it's because you are purposely trying to hinder that person, trying to tell them you're not, you don't have value to me. So when you ignore the commandments of God, you're trying to destroy it. Still with me? When you try to blatantly turn your back upon the Word of God, you are choosing to say, God, you have no value. Well, that's not true. I'm just not sure uh, about what it says. That's not true. If you have the Holy Ghost, it teaches you all things. Asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be open to you. So where's the confusion? God is not the author of confusion. Why do you keep saying you're confused? Confusion is a word that should never be in a Christian's vocabulary.
I'd say anything else, but I'm confused. <laughs> Proverbs chapter. Let me make sure here. 17. Verse number. 28. You ready for this one? Even a fool when he holdeth his peace is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Even a fool at times knows not to talk. A fool. But we foolishly speak against our brothers and sisters. We foolishly share them their history and what they've done, what they said, and how they've done it, how they said it, how they've gone about it, how we don't like it. And if it were us, we would have done it in a different way. But all we can do, brother and sister, is pray. You lying hypocrite. You got to have a gossip and the backbiting that you could and then try to tag God onto it. You might as well blaspheme. Deep subject, Pastor. Proverbs 15 and verse 4. Proverbs 15 and verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. I'm going to wait right there. A wholesome tongue. You ever met somebody who was real wholesome? I have. They're very humble. They don't, you know, they don't speak. They're always speaking positively. They're always speaking words that uplift and edify and bless. When you're around those kind of people, you feel like dumb. You feel like uh, some horse just dropped you on the ground. Some cow just walked over and stepped on you. That's how high you feel when you're around somebody who's wholesome. Yes, Whose words you're like, I love them, but I hope they don't talk to me because apparently they know Jesus and that's why I can't talk to them. Well, you think Jesus is going to jump out of their heart and sick him? Sick of Jesus. You got the same Holy Ghost, right? How are you ever going to learn if you don't communicate? Ask, can you shout in, boy, how many times I can quote that during this thing? Asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be opening. Why don't you ask it? How are you going to grow if you don't know? How are you going to fit through the door if your head's bigger than your heart? Amen. I know I'm on it. Then it goes on. He says, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Now let's put this together. It's a beautiful thing. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but a perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. What's it saying? It's wholesome if you're speaking life and love and godliness into somebody's life. But when you cuss, when you cuss and you talk perverted and you laugh with perverted things, you know, perversion just doesn't have to be the body of somebody. Perversion can mean whenever you're doing the opposite of what God's word says. That's perversion. When you do the opposite of what God's word says, you're ready for this, you won't like this one. You're a pervert. Oh, nobody else is teaching this. You might as well get in line. You might as well get a hold of it. God does not pinpoint perversion of just lust of the flesh. He said lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. All of it lines up to be perverted. Yes. Right. Amen. Still with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Now let's go back a little bit. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. Luke 6 and verse 45. Y'all didn't know Luke's chapters were that long, did you? Well, you should have because you're supposed to be reading it. <laughs> A good man out of the good treasure of his heart 
bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. So in other words, I know the condition of your soul. But most importantly, God knows. When you're always talking and gossiping, when you're always backbiting, when you're always offended, when you're always up in the air or uncertain about where you're going and what God's got for you and who God's got for your life, and I'm going to put a little, little throw up. It means your heart ain't right in the first place. You don't have a relationship with God. You're just visitors that wave each other because you take your trash out at the same time. Oh, we're real good neighbors. I wave to them. Like your lawn. Good to see you. You don't have a relationship with God. Oh, I know God. No, you know of God. To know God, you have to have a prayer life. That is so valuable to you, nobody and nothing gets in its way. I'll say that again. you got to have a prayer life that is so valuable to you, nobody, everybody say nobody, and nothing will get in my way. If you don't have a prayer life that no time, no place, no thing, no situation gets in your way to make sure you got it, you don't have a prayer life. Well, I do pray every chance I get. That's the problem. You don't have a prayer life. Because it's only a prayer life when you get a chance. It should be a prayer life. That you've stepped. Daniel prayed three times a day. He had it pinned up. He had it specific. So much so that his enemies knew when he prayed. But you're going to work him into your schedule. Words matter. Oh God, I long for you. Well, <laughs> since you fit me in. I know the abundance of your heart even though your mouth speaking what it's speaking God still knows the heart you can love him yeah you may love him I love some people that I don't have a relationship with too family members I love them sister Ross I love them I don't ever see them. I don't ever get to talk to them. So you can love somebody and not have a relationship with them. And you can mean what you, oh, I love them. But love is more than a conversation. And love is more than words. So some of you have been telling people that they're so important to you and you can't live without them. And, and, and this is everything and blah, blah, blah. But your life shows them more than your mouth does. Right. And your mouth gets you in trouble every other chance you can get with them. That's because something's in your heart and your mouth is telling on you. Your mouth is the child in Sunday school. What do you mean, preacher? Did you know a child will tell your business to your Sunday school teacher. That's why some people won't come to church. I literally walked up to people and they said, Pastor, I'm sorry, we, we had so many situations that happened last Sunday. We just couldn't be here. and We would have loved to have been here. And God knows we wanted to be. And their kid said, uh-uh, you said we're not going to church because you wanted to lay in bed and watch movies all day. <laughs> That's not what mama said. Uh-huh. Then they're out in the parking lot crying because they got in trouble for telling the preacher the truth. 
Well, amen, Walls. I know it's quiet. First Peter 3 9. First Peter chapter 3 in verse number 9 says not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing but contrary but contrary wise blessing knowing that ye are there unto call that ye should inherit a blessing Amen Not rendering evil for evil. You know what conversation I'm talking about there. They said, what about me? Well, let me tell you about them. They told, what about my baby? Let me tell you what I think about their babies. They didn't like my baby, but their babies are stuck up. Don't come around nobody. Don't do anything they ought to be doing. Think they're God's Mr. Meowmics. I don't know what that means, but whatever. Yeah, their baby needs God just like your baby needs God. And how are you going to justify and get better in it if you ain't walking the walk that you're supposed to be walking? Amen. 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 I'm telling you, God's God no matter what. Whether well, you like it or not, God's God. And if you open up your mouth and you speak evil against somebody that spoke evil against you, you're in trouble, not them. You know how to know who this they are. No, they're not. You know how I know they're not? Because it's none of your business. All right. You were supposed to get God handle it. But no, you promoted yourself and stamped your forehead, God. Man, y'all act like I'm stepping on your feet or something. <laughs> mm. Fine, I'll take my recordings out of your house. So some of y'all think anyway. Matthew 12 and verse 36. Matthew chapter 12. Verse 36. My God, help us learn, Lord. Matthew 12 and verse 36 says, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof when? In the day of judgment. So all the things you're saying that you shouldn't be saying, hello, all the words you're saying that you shouldn't be saying, all the idle words that you speak, the simple phrases that you laugh, well, it's just what I say, it's my habit, it's my habit. It's just the words that I pronounce, it's what I do. Stop doing it, stop pronouncing it, stop saying it. You hear me? When you say, I hate that, that's an idle word. Yes, sir. You will be judged for that hate. All right. That's stupid. That's an idle word. Come on. I don't believe that. That's an idle word. Yes. You better make sure what you're saying is something you don't believe in. Come on now. That's his opinion. You better hope. Yeah. Right. Because if it's in the word of God. You better be very careful. And let me say this. I don't know why I feel this very strongly in the Holy Ghost. But when I get up here and I preach what's in the Word of God, and you walk out of here or you sit in that pew, and you say, well, I don't know that I believe it that way, you're the one God's holding accountable. Yes, sir. I've already been held accountable for it. Yes, God does not give me words to speak up here. I do not have time to speak in the flesh. Come on. Because I will be damned if I get up here and speak in the flesh. Not only are my words judged instantaneously, but my actions and reactions to what God tells me to do. I am judged for instantaneously. 
You better never get on this platform. I don't care if it's a sing. I don't care if it's to play instruments. I don't care if it's a sign. I don't care if it's whatever to preach, to teach, to, to, to give a testimony. You better never get up there and not be repentant. Because God judges you then and there. Whether you want to believe it or not. I'm telling you already, God judges us when we come into his house. And God judges us when we're in our homes. And God judges us when in our cars and in our places of places of, of play. And God judges us in our work. Whether anybody else sees you or not, God sees you. Whether anybody else hears you or not, God hears you. I don't care if an angel hears you. I don't care if a demon hears you. I don't care if some person that thinks all of your stupidity is fun. It is God that hears it all, first and foremost. Still with me? So when that scripture, Matthew 12 and 36, when it says, But I say to you that every idle word that, that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That includes little church quotes that are cute. You understand? You know when you say, well, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. You're going to be, you're going to be judged for your judgment. Are, do you got sin in your life? Did you got, did you, somebody pick, stamp, pick a perfect on your forehead overnight? Because if they did, it's a prank. You better wash that off. In other words, stop it already. Isn't it funny nobody else has the spiritual walk you do and yet you don't commit to God and you keep playing with sin and you keep justifying attitudes and you keep justifying outbreaks of attitudes. But everybody else is damned and you're perfectly going to heaven. You might as well be spitting out of words. Because you're not in God's will and you judged by your idle thought and your idle word together. Whether you understand it or not, people know when you judge them. Because your actions and your facial expressions, no matter how much you think you you got it down, oh, I got it down, nobody knows whether I'm upset. Right. We're all idiots and you're the king or queen of everything. And yet the Holy Ghost will teach us all things so we know when you're nothing but a two-faced liar. I'm sorry, you think the Holy Ghost doesn't sit back and tell other people when you're hypocritical? You're out of your mind. The Holy Ghost teaches us all things. That's what causes division in the body of Christ. How about you get about you and your walk with God? How about you get with you and your faithfulness to the kingdom and be about your father's business and edify somebody instead of destroying him? James 1 and 9. Praise God. If it's a speaking, you say hallelujah. hallelujah. If it's not, say God help me. James 1 and 19. I'm sorry, I said nine. James 1 and 19. Wherefore, my beloved, beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. Slow to wrath. You said, what about me? Come here. He said, what? Let me tell you about him. I'm sorry, you said they said something about me? And me. Okay. What was it? Well, I was just telling you. You don't have to do that. I didn't need to know that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still happy. I'm going to leave here the same way. But you don't have to share that stuff. I don't, I don't concern myself with pettiness. I don't concern myself with tellbearers. You know what gossip is? Gossip is when Brother Ross tells me something about Brother Stephen and I go tell Brother Madison. Now you're a gossip. You know what tailbearing is? When I build upon it and I come to my own conclusions. You know, everybody else is worshiping but her. 
I don't know what Maybe we ought to pray for her. I don't know if she needs hands laid on her or shut up. Maybe we need to get some of these spiritual ladies to go and pray around her. If we can find some. Wow, amen. You're building it and you're taking it to everybody else to where other people believe it. Oh, God help you. Because I'm telling you, God will judge you right then and there for your stupid mouth. Hello. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. This is powerful. This, this, this message, you might not be jumping the aisles and shouting, but this is one of the most powerful messages I will ever preach in my lifetime. Because this will bless you or this will curse you. Because it's either life coming out of you or death coming out of you. Which means there's either, listen, there's either life in you or death in you. That means you're either alive in Christ or dead with Satan. Hello. Ephesians 4 and 9. You ready? Let no, everybody say no. No. Corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is what? Y'all lost? 429. Sorry. Somebody else read 9. No, I'm just kidding. 429. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is what? What does good mean? Ready, drum roll? Not bad. Now, ready? It, it means more than that. What does the Bible say? There is no good. There is no good except God. So whenever it says good, when it says in Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of thy mouth, but that which is Good, it is saying that which is godly, that which is godly to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. What is ministry? Ministry must edify, ministry must exhort, it must correct with godly fear. But it can never condemn. Condemnation is chosen. Hello? Condemnation is a choice of an individual. Some people are so much leaders of families, they can lead the whole family into condemnation. The entire family becomes condemned because of one person's choice. I know I've lived it. With the patriarch of the family fall. There's two positions they could have done. They either were a leader, which means they did it along with, they exhorted, they educated, they implored, and, and, and helped them get to where they need to be and have a relationship of success. Or they were a boss. Do what I say and quit worrying about what I'm doing. You just do what I'm telling you. You don't worry about what anybody else says. You 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 listen to my voice. Don't you listen to anybody else? Are you leading them to heaven? Or are you bossing them to hell? Because when you're nothing but a boss and not a leader as a patriarch, you're either helping them get their own relationship with God and walk with God as faithful as you and more, or you're demanding they do what you say, not what you do. And that causes them to not, unless the grace of God be poured out upon them. 
by the mercies of God. That causes them to look at you instead of him. Leaders tell them to look at him instead of you. Look to Jesus. Yeah, what I'm teaching you is right. What I'm preaching is right. What I'm edifying you is real. What I'm helping you with is real. But I need you. 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 I need you to have your own walk with God. I don't need you to come up and say prophesy to me, Pastor. I need God to speak to you. And only if he needs me to confirm it, I can confirm it. I don't need you to come up and say, what's God's will, Pastor? I need God to be able to speak to you. Amen. Not your emotions. Not your feelings. Not your opinion. God's voice. God's word. What does God's word say? What does God's voice say? Not your flesh. Pray and fast and get your flesh under control. Would you please? Don't come to me and tell me, I've heard from the Lord. Really? How long did you pray and fast about it? We skipped one meal. Get out of my face. I said pray and fast. Not miss breakfast that you don't eat every day. Not miss lunch that you barely eat. Not miss dinner because you switched and ate lunch instead. We prayed and fasted two days. You didn't even break a sweat for Jesus, did you? So you came to me with something that's life changing, but you didn't give enough value to it to get a nickel out of the stupid cart at the store up the road. You're not even getting your quarterback. Let no corrupt nothing. Let nothing stop your negative talk. Stop your squawking about pain. Stop your backbiting. Stop your gossiping. Stop your lying. Stop your entertaining those who do that. Well, I wouldn't say it that way. I've had to say that to me. I wouldn't say it that way. Well, how would you say it? Yes, they have a little bit of struggle, but there's a lot of things they do well. They just need somebody encouraged. I, it's literally stopped people from being fired. Yeah. Right? I'm ready to fire them. They can't do anything right. What do you think, Daniel? I understand you're upset, but let me let me be somebody on the outside here. Is that okay? Yeah, whatever, because they think I'm going to agree with them 100%. Yeah. I say, truthfully, let's be honest. Let's honest. Tell me, do they do these things right? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess I have to say that. So they're not failures. But they are struggling on this one thing. Or these two things. Let's give them some time. Let's let them know. Hey, be, this is becoming a little bit of a problem. We've got to deal with this. But let's teach them to do it the right way. Or remind them to do it the right way. And then help them succeed. It's literally stop people from being fired. Wouldn't you love for somebody not to have evil communication against you? Wouldn't you love somebody not to not have corrupt communication concerning you? Would you love if that corrupt communication wasn't around your children? Your grandchildren? Your children's children's children? Wouldn't it be great if that corruptness didn't come out of their mouth and touch the lives of your neighbor or your neighbor's neighbor or your community? You will be held accountable. That's what the Word of God said. I didn't write it. I didn't make it up. It's not a fairy tale. And it's not something right. When you speak evil, God holds you accountable. Yes, He does. Because it says you will be judged over every, every corrupt word that comes out of your mouth. Every conversation. Don't you sit there and start thinking about your conversations right now. I'm not done teaching. There'll be time if you have to you for you to bite your bottom lip and cry later. 
Hallelujah. Uh, there he goes thinking he's somewhere. Keep judging me. That worked for you. <laughs> Everybody stand up real quick. We're going to do something important. I want you to raise your hands toward heaven. And I want you to begin to bind the sickness that is in Brother Chris Paul. Commanded to leave in the name of Jesus Christ right now. If God gives you the name of what it is, speak it. But, but begin to bind the sickness in his body in the name of Jesus Christ right now. For the glory of God. Lord, we present Brother Chris Paul the boy of Rome. We submit to you, our brother. Lord, you said, ask and you shall receive. Not seek and you shall find. Not and it shall be open to you. We're asking and seeking you tonight. We're knocking on heaven's door. We're knocking on your heart. Lord, you're by your word. By your word, you said with this strife and by his good strife, he is healed. So we speak both the word of God with the stripes of Jesus Christ. Chris Paul, he healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Chris Paul, be made whole right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap and a praise and thank you earnestly. Oh, don't just do it lightly. Do it earnestly with your voice. Please be seated. I speak it in the name of Jesus. I speak it in the name of Jesus. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Still with me? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray you'll lead us into all truth. Hold nothing back from us. Hold nothing back, I pray, Lord Jesus, please. My God, hallelujah. We're going to go back into Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 19. Proverbs 10 and 19. There's several in Proverbs. Proverbs, if you don't know anything else and you're wanting to be wiser than you are, and I hope to God you do. I know I do. If you want to be wiser in all things, I strongly advise you to get and read all of the book of Proverbs and do it slowly and with purpose. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 19. You with me? Yes. All right. 10 and 19 says, In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Let's go to 20. The tongue of the just is a choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is, and it says little worth, but it, actually the interpretation says the heart of the wicked is worthless. Amen. 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 In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. In other words, the one who just talks, they're not looking to sin. They're not looking to have division. They're not looking. They're really not wanting to corrupt. The problem is, if they keep talking sooner or later, it's going to corrupt. There's going to be sin. Maybe they don't want to, but, but maybe they're just looking for a friend. Maybe they're somebody who hasn't matured enough to learn to stop talking. But those, those who refraineth their lips is wise. Yeah. Just stop talking. Learn to listen. The problem with somebody who never stops praying and starts listening is they'll never hear God's voice. I've literally prayed with people and tapped them on the shoulder and said, come up for air. 
God hears you talking, but if that's all you're doing over and over again, how is he ever supposed to answer you? And if you've been praying about it and praying about it and praying about it, when are you going to stop and let him answer? I literally ask God for something and stop and wait. I pray what? God, I'm giving you this situation. I cannot handle this. This is out of my ability. You're the only one who can. And as the man of God in my family, or as the man of God at this church, or as the man of God in this fellowship, whatever I need, God, I'm giving it to you, and I need you to work on the hearts. I can't do that. I need you to work on their minds. I can't do that. I need you, you to work on their attitudes and their circumstances. I can't do that. But you can, God. I trust you. And I've got people like, are you still praying? I am, because I prayed then. And it, it just, it didn't. It's in the jar. <laughs> oh, God, I asked you last Saturday. It didn't happen. <laughs> oh, God, I asked you again. The other Saturday, the other Saturday, the other Saturday. Uh -huh. Are you listening, God? Uh -huh. Are you? You keep giving me stuff, but you don't trust me to do it. You keep telling everybody you don't know why I haven't done it yet. I don't know why you haven't let me. It's been two years, God. I'm still with you. I heard you. How many of you all have changed somebody's heart, mind, thoughts, and attitudes, and opinion? that quick only God can do that that's why in the middle of these church services that's why in the middle of our services I see people's hearts pricked I see them tilt that head and their eyes open like revelation it just smack them in the face Boom. get it now yes is what I want to scream instead I have to keep preaching Oh, the God, praise be to God. And I sometimes see him walk out and turn back to the church. And I see that. And I'm like, no, no, bring it back. All right. Come on. All right. Who do they talk to? <laughs> or why do they talk themselves out of it? Come on. Oh. I kid you not, it hits me like a ton of bricks and breaks my soul. Yeah. Proverbs 31 and verse 8. Praise be to God. Proverbs 31 and verse number 8. It says, Open my mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such are appointed to destruction. Verse 9. Open thy mouth. Judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. You know what it's saying? Speak up for the people that can't speak up for themselves. Amen. And do it righteously. Do it godly for the child, for the adult, for the one that doesn't know anything. Give them the benefit of the blessing. Right. Invest in somebody. You know what I do? I, 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 I purposely invest in you. I'll take you aside. And you I go, listen, this is what you better do. I don't think I do that. But I do say, listen, I, I got to tell you something. This, 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 and this. Now it's up to you. But I'm telling you. I've got this from God. You do what you want. And there have been times that people did the exact opposite. And in my mind, I went, What is wrong with them, God? Literally, I showed them the blessing, the route of blessings. I showed them the route of faith. You told me to tell them. Why didn't they listen? He says, because they like the sound of their voice better than they do the mine. 
They like the sound of their own voice better than they like the sound of God's voice. In other words, you chose to do what you wanted to do because it's my life and I'm a big boy and a big girl. Yeah, you're doing really good at it. That's why you're failing. Keep up the good work. Did I hurt your feelings? I'm working. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? This is going to take a lot longer than I have time for. James 3 and 10. I'm just going to read these. It says, Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and curses. Yeah. But right after that he says, My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Out of your same mouth, you're blessing people and you're cursing people. That should never happen. I said that should never happen. Amen. Either you're a child of God, you speak blessings. Amen. You know what? You know what you have the business of speaking or cursing is. You don't. Quick, raise your hand if you're a prophet. Didn't think so. And then a prophet better be purely, righteously, holy, humble before God. In order to speak both. They speak, thus saith the Lord. If you will do this, I will do this, 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 this. But if you refuse, I will do this, 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 and this. And they ought to be shaking in their shoes. They ought to be quaking in their footsteps. They should be bawling and pleading to God for mercy. God, speak to the hearts that they would not fall. That they would not fall so that they would not fail. Proverbs 11 and 13 says, The talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. In other words, if you're a talebearer, you're going to tell everybody's business, everybody's past, everybody's home. If somebody calls you and says, let me tell you about so-and-so, hang up as fast as you can and don't take their phone calls. If somebody walks up to you and says, listen, I know you're struggling and I know you're trying to make some decisions, but let me tell you a couple of things to help you out. If it ain't edifying, if it's not uplifting, if it's not a blessing, walk away and ask them not to speak to you. Oh, but they're a godly man. Not if they're back. Not if they're doing tail bearing. They ain't a godly man. Well, I think highly of their God fearing woman. No, she ain't. If she's a tail bearer. Somebody listening to me tonight? Ecclesiastes ten and twelve. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow him up himself. Wow. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. Yeah. James 3 and 2. For in many things we offend all. If, if a man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. You know how I know your whole body is not hooked up with Jesus? You know when I know you don't have a port connected with Jesus to the heart? It's when your mouth betrays you. Because when your mouth betrays you, your heart is perverted. Your heart is tainted. You've covered everything in the blood and then you took your heart back. Sweetheart, you better run for the water and get the blood over it again. My God, still with me? Psalm 71 and 8 says, Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and thy honor all the day. Amen. You're not promised tomorrow. You've got what this day has for you. So you ought to be praising the Lord all day long. You ought to be lifting up the Lord all day long. You better be glorifying your God all day long. 
couple, couple more. I'm reading them fast. You all right with that? Yeah. Luke 12 and 3. If you need them, go back and watch it. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. Your gossiping, your tail bearing, your backbiting, your whisper to the spouse. It was just between us. It was between you and heaven, honey. I don't care how soft you spoke. I don't care what ministry brother you said it to, what ministry sister you said it to, if they listened and they didn't shut you up and walk away, they're as big as a hypocrite as you are. You better fall on your face and repent for your sins. Colossians 4 verses 5 and 6 says, Walk in the wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. God just told you how to open your mouth and close it. He just told us how to open our mouths and close it. Colossians 4, 5 through 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. In other words, everybody not in truth, you walk in wisdom with them. Don't you go up and laugh at their stupid jokes. Don't you get to entertain them and make them your best friend. Why are you making the devil your best friend? Why is it every time you're disappointed with something in the church, you go back to a family member that doesn't believe it? You go back to a friend that you know is playing in the sin box. Man, this will, this will beat you half to death. I got it first. Deal with it. Romans 10 and 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart with God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In other words, if you don't believe Jesus is real, nothing else matters. That's not the only way to get to heaven. That says thou shalt be saved. In other words, if you believe on him, you're going to believe on his word. If you believe on his word, you're going to heaven. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 15, 22. I really wish some of you all would get a hold of this. I wish everybody in the sound of my voice forever will get a hold of this. Proverbs 15, 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. But you better make sure those counselors are God-fearing, God-anointed, God-appointed counselors. You can't go to the hypocrite and get God-fearing advice. You can't go back to the sinner and get God-fearing advice. You can't go to the world and its books and its dictionary. You can't go to some religion that's preaching false truths and find out the wisdom of God. Get the truth. And if you've got good leadership, they're going to lead you to other leaders that can confirm yes. or deny yes. what the Lord is saying. All right. Amen. Romans 8 and 26. Listen to me carefully. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Helps our infirmities. For we know not that we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. But I need to remind you, this is when you don't know what to pray for yourself. This is not every church service. This is not every prayer meeting. You're not stupid. Open your mouth and pray in English. I don't want anybody else hearing me. That's why I speak in tongues all the time. Oh, I see. You're a hypocrite. There was a brother years ago used to go to the same prayer closet I was in. And with all of my heart, I pray this prayer. God, I know I'm the least of every man. Brother Chris Ross, that has not changed. I'm not ashamed to say I am the least of all the men. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I know the evil that I used to be. I know the hypocrite I used to be. 
And I know I'm only here by the mercy and the grace of an almighty, all perfect, and all forgiving God. I'm only here because he heard my repentance. He helped me to be washed in his blood. And he filled me with the Holy Ghost. As the Spirit gave me out. And he's allowing me to preach and teach and live this truth. That's the only reason I'm here. Well, let me tell you about Pastor Jack. He was a no good, stinking rock. Yeah, he told us that in church. Oh, but you don't know what else he, he did. This yeah, I do. He didn't hide anything. He got nothing to hide. Do you know my past? Quick, let's do it together. What did you do? You knowing my past does not keep me up at night. Me not repenting over it would keep me up at night. Amen. Him not forgiving me would keep me up at night. Me not being sincere that I'm going to make it to heaven and I'm going to be with my Jesus one day. That's all that matters. I don't care what you think you know. My, my past is under the blood. My sins have been washed away. I am determined to make it to heaven. And I don't have to trash you to get there. I ain't going to gossip and tell Barry to get. I know secrets about people, and I will take it to my grave. I know things about people that have come into this church and left this church, and it ain't nobody but nobody's business. The only purposes that I have ever done is when God has told me to speak. And other than that, I've never opened my mouth. I know secrets that would destroy families. I know secrets that would destroy ministries. But if you think I would ever speak against my brothers and my sisters, then their sins are also under the blood just like mine. You're out of your brain. You're out of your mind. You're out of your intelligence. I will never forsake what God has blessed me with. Almost. You know why you don't understand stuff? Because you're playing the fool's game. You're playing the fool's game. You're wanting to not understand. You know how I know? Because Proverbs 18 and 2 says, A fool hath no delight in understanding. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. I just know what my heart says. And from the abundance of your cesspool heart, your mouth is speaking. I'm almost done. Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb and sweet to the soul and health to the bone. Why can't you speak pleasantness to people? Well, they agitated me. Oh, so that means you've got to be a demon too. That means you got to put on the devil's overcoat. Man, you're hurting my feelings, brother. This is stepping on my toes. I hope you get it from God before I do. Isaiah 55 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Listen to me. This is you. This is important. I'm telling you the finality of where I'm preaching just for tonight. This is it. I'm bringing it to a close. And if you don't get this, I hope to God you don't rest until you do. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. What are you speaking to every day? What are you speaking into life, and what are you killing every day? 
because it's not your job to kill. It's your job to heal. It's your job to resurrect. It's your job to speak life. You want to be used in the gift, but you speak death and everything else. You want to be used in the gift, but you want to be one use of faith. You want to be one use of love. You want to be one use of mercy. You want to be one use of kindness. You want to help people break through the Holy Ghost. What is the condition of your heart and of your tongue? Don't you understand? The reason God is holding his people accountable for every word that comes out of their mouth is because it either speaks life, my God, or you speak death. You are either edifying and uplifting and building life or you speaking down and destroying that. I don't care if it's your sister, your brother, your cousin, your mother, your father, the one that ran out on you, the one that left you, the one that hurt your feelings and broke you, the ex, the new, the next. I don't care. God's holding us accountable for all of it. All of it. If they're of God and you're of God, you won't have an ex. Because if not, you shouldn't have been in the relationship in the first place. Right. It's you who allowed your heart and your mind to change. And then you started spewing out of your mouth something like that. God's holding us accountable. Let's stand. God's holding us accountable. God's demanding we be the people of the word. Not just the word in that Bible, but the words that come out of our mouth. You can either raise somebody up out of the cesspool of sin with your words, or you can entertain them and join them and pretend like you're making it to heaven anyway. Just like you can with what you put on, but we ain't getting into that. You go ahead and justify what you've been wearing all you want. God is not fraudulent. He's not a fake. And he didn't change his word just because you started putting on something you weren't supposed to. Or taking off stuff that you weren't supposed to. I don't feel. God didn't ask you for your opinion. I don't think. God didn't ask you for your thought. Your thought is what's getting your heart and your mouth in trouble. How about we just obey? How about we just align with the word of God and stop trying to split up the atoms? Then make it. You're only here because of his word. We are only here because of his word. Where to now? Will you walk out of here with a resolve? Lord, anoint my tongue and anoint my lips that nothing but your goodness comes out of this mouth. Nothing but blessings protrude out of this mouth. When I'm angry, I will not spit out vulgarities or cesspools of evil. I will speak blessing. He said, bless those that curse you. Why are you speaking against somebody else? With the same cesspool they spoke to you with. I would to God I had a mirror for everyone to look in tonight. I wish I had a, an individual mirror to hand out to everybody in this congregation. Because I tell you to look in that mirror and find out who the one that has to speak in to speak like this. When I say breathe light, I'm not just talking about take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. I'm saying to take a deep breath in and let the words of Christ come out to love me. Help and love me to life. Not my will, but thy will be done. Not just, I don't think some of us can ever pray that prayer. Don't you understand the very, for, the very foundation of what those words were spoken to at? He was so in depth and sorrow in the flesh and crying out in the spirit that he prayed and his sweat was as of drops of blood. <laughs> drops of blood. Come on. 
And we casually say, not my will, but thy will, Lord. And we don't understand the depths of that. So now I challenge you. You're a Christian, right? You've been blood-bought, mercy saw. You receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and Christ lives in you, right? Raise your hand if you have. Then if that's you, speak as the Lord would have you speak. React to what God would have you react to. Take up the banner for the one that can't take it up for themselves. Speak blessings. Speak life. Speak love. But stop speaking evil. Stop speaking idle. And stop speaking as a fool. The Bible says call no man fool. Is it something? We don't have to call anybody fool, but we sure can make ourselves one. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't giggle at the sins and act like they're nothing and, and participate in the sin one day and then try to invite them to church like you're pure the next. Be ye holy, for I am holy. If every time you come to church, you got to feel sorrowful and broken and, and, and destitute. I'm not worthy and the word picked my heart. Either you're new in church and you're learning to get a hold of God, or you're a hypocrite. Which one is it? God called you out of the darkness. God called you into his marvelous life. God chose you for greater. Are you going to allow God to do that? Or have you chosen your own? Your own desires. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, I give all myself to you, here I am, here I am, Lord, here I am, let your mercy Move on me, here I am, here I am, Lord, here I am, I give all myself to you, here I am. I 
that you would forgive us of such actions and perversions of our lives. God, that you would enlighten us to your word and to your promises, but also to your corrections. Help us to be vessels that find a place of prayer every single day, letting absolutely nothing interfere. But God, that you would find us there, that you would meet us there, Lord. That you would hear our prayers, hear our cries, hear our tears. God, that you would embolden us to speak in the language that you've given us. And when necessary, speak in the tongues and the wailings that you've provided as well. Lord, help us to learn to be people of prayer, of praise, of worship not foolish in our ways, not idle tongues or foolish speakings. But God, every time we would open our mouths to say foolish things, God, if I may, I ask that you would place angels about every tongue and every mouth. God, that you would shut up the mouth, hard if necessary, violently if necessary, and bite their tongues if necessary. But God, let us be obedient to your ways. Help us to hold ourselves accountable unto you, even if nobody else does. Help us to hold ourselves accountable to you, even if nobody else chooses. And God, we will not fail to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for this in all things. In the name of Jesus Christ, Christ we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly that I want to know you love him in Jesus' name.
put all the paper scraps on it. Don't put it in the trash can, okay? Do not throw that. Dry it Thank <laughs> you. 